How's it going folks? This is Jeff Benjamin. In this video we go hands on with the Glyph Atom Pro SSD and as you can see, this Thunderbolt 3 SSD is no slouch in the speed department. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. So here is the Glyph Atom Pro SSD. This is a one terabyte Thunderbolt 3 NVMe SSD. We've reviewed some Glyph products before. I think we reviewed one of their RAID SSDs back in the day. And when I hear the name Glyph, there's one thing that really pops into my mind, and that is build quality. And we'll talk about that in a second. But as you can see, dimensions 3.1 by 5.25 by 0.75 inches thick. And this device is bus powered. It comes with a built-in Thunderbolt 3 cable, actually not totally built in, but you'll see what I mean. And also comes with that rugged bumper. There is the Thunderbolt 3 cable. It stores away inside that bumper, which is really cool. And like I said, I'll show you how all that works here in just a second. So let's go ahead and get it unboxed. Here it is, folks, that Thunderbolt 3 cable stored away. Now to get it out, you just simply pull on the bumper like that and the, the two little ends pop out just like you saw there. And it's, it's kind of clever. Now, the only, I guess you could say downside of that is that the cable is going to be fairly short and only about 10 inches total. So just keep that in mind. Again, this is Thunderbolt 3, so you can't connect it to just a USB-C port and expect it to work. It does have to be connected to a Thunderbolt 3 port on your MacBook or your Mac Pro. So here is the underside with the bumper taken off. You can see the little feet that keep it from sliding around your desk. Uh, so you could use it like this if you want to. You see the LED indicator there as well. And here's the drive compared to one of its closest competitors, the Samsung X5. Uh, you see the X5 here and the Glyph Atom Pro SSD here. So these devices are very close in size. Now let's go into the NVMe Express in the system profiler and find our drive. Here it is. So this is a WDS100T3 XOC, whatever that means, right? Look that up on Google and then you can see that this is actually a Western Digital Black PC SN750 NVMe SSD, one terabyte Western Digital Black SSD. So that's what's inside this thing. And those drives are fairly speedy and that's gonna really saturate that Thunderbolt 3 interface capable of speeds up to 2,800 megabytes per second over Thunderbolt 3. And we're gonna run some speed tests to see how this thing actually performs. So here's the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test Tool. We'll go ahead and select our Glyph one terabyte and open and then click Start. What I'm really interested in is to see how this thing performs over sustained testing. Will it throttle a lot? Well, you can see the speed is very fast, both in read and write, write about 2200 megabytes a second, read about 2400, and I'm speeding this up over eight minutes. And you can see there's really no throttling here at all. It's pretty much fast over this entire span of eight minutes. It pretty much stays the same over that entire span. So you're not experiencing a whole bunch of slowdown due to heat, which is very important for a drive that's passively cooled because the M.2 blade inside this thing will get extremely hot when under load. But this chassis does a really good job of keeping the drive cool. In fact, it's cool to the touch even after sustained testing here. Um, so write speed isn't as good here on the Asia System Test Lite. You can see it kind of dropped there. But it is consistent. That's the thing. And read is very consistent as well. This is a 16 gigabyte test. And like I did before, we're going to speed this up over eight minutes. And you can see it's consistent. There isn't any like major, major drops after sustained read and write testing as you can see there. So very impressive given the fact that there is no sort of cooling in here. It's all possible thanks to the design of the drive itself, which is all metal and it works as a giant heat sink. Okay, so a couple of more tests. We're gonna do a write and read test in Finder, just dragging and dropping a about 107 gigabyte file. I've sped this up again, and it takes about 60 seconds to transfer that file, so very speedy. But what we really wanna pay attention to is how the drive performs near the end of the transfer. Because initially, a lot of drives are really fast up front, but as they heat up, they start to throttle down. I wanted to see if the same thing would happen with this drive. So it took about 63 seconds to read this 107 gigabyte file. 
sped this up a little bit, you can see it's still just as fast near the end of the file transfer. And when I perform a speed test right after that file transfer, you can still see that the speeds haven't slowed down at all. Now I'm not saying that this SSD will never throttle, but as you can see from the testing, it performs very well, stays consistent even when stressed out. This is gonna be a solid device for editing 4K, 6K, maybe even 8K workflows on the go with your MacBook Pro. And I love the fact that it has that stowaway Thunderbolt 3 cable that easily snaps out and is ready to use just by pulling on the sides of the bumper. That's kind of clever. And it just pulls right out like that. So the Glyph Atom Pro SSD makes for a great MacBook Pro companion. It's bus powered, passively cooled. The rugged bumper, although a lint magnet, does give it excellent drop protection. And the outer aluminum enclosure itself is basically a giant heat sink so this thing can work at full speed consistently and as you can see it's also very small although not as small as the samsung t7 touch speaking of which i think the samsung t7 touch and the t5 make a lot of sense for a lot of users being just a standard usb 3.2 gen 2 drive it is not as fast as the glyph atom pro ssd however the Samsung drive is significantly cheaper and a lot of users may find that it's fast enough for their workflows, although it's obviously nowhere near as fast as the Atom Pro SSD. So a lot to consider here, speed, build quality, drop protection, cable storage. If you're transferring very large files on a regular basis, the Glyph Atom Pro SSD is a solid option. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments. This is Jeff with the 9to5Mac.